Welcome back everyone. The purpose of this video is to take you through how to get set up for trading and scalping options with interactive brokers on the desktop software. So I've seen a lot of different setups and a lot of them tend to be convoluted. They require a lot of different monitors. You see vertical monitors, you see displays on horizontal. So what I went ahead and did was I set this up so that this is something you can recreate if you have a single monitor. However, if you have additional monitors or displays, you can extend out and take more advantage of your setup. So what you see here is my setup, and I'm gonna go through the individual components with you first, explain things, and then we'll dig in and I'll show you exactly how to set it up. So let's get started here. You're gonna see what I'm doing is I have my news on the left-hand side here, right? And I have two different watch lists. I can also see the QQQ, and we're just gonna add in the SPY right here and I'm gonna detach this and move this to group seven so that they're not the same, right? So a spy, I'm gonna set that back to QQQ, right? Because I like to keep an eye on the general markets. And again, this is on one screen. If you have multiple, you can create more space and put this on another screen, another display. But again, this is just for those of you with one. Now we have our two watch lists, we have the markets, and then we have the security and focus. And on the right hand side here, this is your book trader. This is where you're trading your options. So let's dig into how you could set this up and break down the individual components. So what you wanna do here at the very bottom is you're gonna create, you're gonna hit the plus sign and you're gonna create a new window. And it's gonna be a blank canvas. And you wanna make sure that the layout is unlocked. So I can click here to unlock it, right? And when you go to lock it again, it'll say, do you wanna save changes? I'm gonna say yes. What does that mean? Well, when it's unlocked, you can stretch and you can manipulate things. You can change them around. So we'll take a look here. I can move this around. I can pull it back. I could shrink the size. I can expand out. I can close my windows. I can even grab this, drag it, move it around, place it here. It's not as efficient. So you get the idea. You're going to be able to move and position things in a way that's convenient for you, but I'm going to show you some of the critical items I have. That way I can move quickly when I'm trading and scalping. So what do I do? Okay. We know that we want to watch news. We want to see what's happening intraday in case there's any major news, particularly if you're scalping. So what do I do with that? Well, I set my news to group three, right? Then I have two watch lists here and you might wonder why do I have two watch lists with the same security? Well, it's not quite the same security here. I have Tesla and I'm just using Tesla as an example because everybody loves Tesla. And I have this linked to the news. And so what I have here is the financial instrument. So I actually have just Tesla stock. So what do I do for that? I just type in the stock. Let's say that I wanted to type in AMD. I click here and it's pretty intuitive. You hit enter and you just, it's a stock. You could have chosen the option. So now when I click on this, we're gonna see it populated up here. I'm looking at AMD and that's populated here. And we're also set to group three. So if I move to Tesla, the news is gonna change. If I click on AMD, the news will change. So then I could just move up and down and there's space here as well. So it's pretty intuitive, it's a little different from what you see on Thinkorswim where it has to be all inside of one single vertical column. We stretch out here, there are multiple columns. So you have space for a lot of securities. Typically you won't have a massive watch list, but if you do, you can scroll up and down. So again, you click on it and it appears. And how does this work? Similar concept to Thinkorswim or other platforms is windows are linked by these color codes and these groups, right? So if I set something to group three, they will all work off of the same selection. So this is group three, this is group three. If I click on AMD, it's group three, it'll show AMD news. If I click on Tesla, anything linked to group three will reflect that. Now we see this is green and this is green, meaning that if I wanted to pull up some data in the green column, I would just click here and you'll start to see, and this is an options unit. You'll start to see a reflection on options. So if you just wanted to see this as well on your charts, let's say for your charts, you actually wanted a visual and you wanted to take a look and let's say move this to group three. I'm just trying to show you how it works here. When you click on Tesla, now you see the stock over here. And of course, you know, with interactive brokers, you click on the plus on the magnifying glass, you see a plus, and you can zoom in. You can zoom in here as well. You can choose different time frames. So I have one minute up here, five minute for some people who just like different perspectives. You know my take on time frames. 
So then what do we do to enable ourselves to trade quickly once you have this all set up? Well, first, let's show how you would set up. So how do I introduce any of these new windows? So anything that you want to put in, and you can just copy my setup if you'd like. I have news, then I have two watch lists, then I have the spy in the QQQ, and then I have Tesla here, right? That's what I click on, and I can see Tesla because now I have it linked to group three. Anything you want to introduce that's new, just click on new window, right? For a new watch list, you're going to get something like this, right? And you could stretch it, you can manipulate the size, I could shrink it, and you could fit it in wherever you'd like. And that would be one of your watch lists. And then you could choose which group it's associated with. I'm going to close this now. If I wanted to, yeah, we're going to get rid of that. If I wanted to introduce a chart, well, you just go to chart. And I wouldn't choose thumbnail chart because it decreases your options. Just choose chart. And then you have a lot of options. You could choose your time frames here. You could zoom in, zoom out and you can associate it with a group. And of course, you can also make selections here. You can right click and have a variety of different options. So we'll close that out. So you have an idea to how to set this up. Again, just get in, go to your bottom tab, get a new canvas and just start inserting these windows. This is going to be your news. This is going to be monitors or watch lists. These are going to be charts just for securities. These are going to be charts just for securities. You can have this set up in a couple minutes and I won't take you through the process because I want to be brief and concise, but thorough. So there's more that we need to look at here and we're going to move on in just a moment, but configure this the way that you like it. Some people are going to make this a little bit wider, some a little bit more narrow. What I did is I like to have two bigger displays for watching price action, particularly on the security that I'm looking at trading. And I don't, I don't need this to be overly big. Like, I mean, we have two columns here. This is more than enough for my watch list that I'm trading actively, right? If we're talking about day trading, we're talking about scalping, this is sufficient and you can always scroll down, right? So then you link them together with the appropriate color codes. Now, what do I have here? This is Book Trader. So what do you do? You go here and you can actually pull up Book Trader as well. So you have a new window and you choose Book Trader. Now there's a little bit more to Book Trader. This is gonna look just like Active Trader on Think or Swim. And this allows you to execute instant orders. And this is very, very important to those of you who are not using something like an options matrix with TradeStation, Active Trader with Thinkorswim, or Book Trader. If you're day trading or scalping, this makes all the difference. Because all that you have to do is just point, click, and trade, right? So how do we get this information up here? So I want to go through that as well. Like I said, this is where I have my so right here is where I have my options linked and it's set to green. So why do I do that? Well, if I want to pull up an option, let's say I'm watching Tesla and AMD and I have charts in different windows and that's what I want to pull in because I want to trade it really quickly. Let's see how that goes. I type in AMD here and it's pretty intuitive. It's going to say, do you want stocks or options? I'm going to click options. And it's going to give me some choices. One thing you want to do, make sure you have weeklies and quarterly selected or they won't display. And let's go with what we're trading or looking to trade this week. Today is a Sunday, tomorrow. We're looking at the weeklies, that'll be February 11th, and I'm looking at the 130s on AMD. Now, if you don't see it, you may need to add more strikes. It defaults you just to eight. So if I had just eight, we'd only see these, right? We can move up to, I just set a custom 20. You could set all, you'll get quite a bit. And here we go. So we see that it's not populated here, right? But I wanna have this queued up. That way, if I wanna make a move, if I wanna start trading AMD really quickly, I want to be able to jump over into my book trader. How do I do that? I queue it up. I talk about queuing up your contracts the morning of or the evening before. So here we go. Select, bang. There we go. AMD is there. Now let's say that it's in the day. You can see the activity is starting to populate some data that is displaying from what we saw this past Friday. I would just click right here and we're off to the races. I have the opportunity to trade AMD, but we're not done just yet. There are a few things you need to customize or critical. So first of all, you see your sizing up here. So all it takes is one click to sell, one click to buy. And you can customize these colors, by the way. You can change the background. You could change the green, the yellow, that sort of thing. That's all to your own preference. What we want to do is make sure that we have our default size set up. Have your sizing set up because you want to buy as many as you're looking to buy. Another thing is armed. So this is critical. What does armed mean? Armed means that it'll transmit your order immediately. You click, you're in. You click, you're out. All else equal. Not having it armed will yield a confirmation screen. So you'll get a little pop-up saying, are you sure? Would you like to transmit this order? 
that's going to delay you if you're trying to move quickly. A lot of people don't want that, particularly for scalping and for day trades. So I set it to armed. So then what else can we do? What else is important here? Well, there's one piece that I want to go through with you really quickly. We know how to link. We know how to queue up our options. So we can just click on an option, have it populate here. Click on this option, have it populate here for AMD. You got that much. We can arm it. So now we can instantly transmit our orders. We're monitoring here. We see news. We see our watch list. We see charts on the market. You have almost everything you need. But let's go into configuration. I want to make sure to go through this with you so that you don't get yourself into trouble. I say it all the time. There's enough risk in trading. There's no reason. Please don't allow yourself to make easy errors or what I would call unforced errors. You know, don't lose your money that way. Don't give your money to the market that easily. So let's click here on configure and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So when we scroll down, we look at price ladder control. A lot of people get mixed up. What does that mean? So when a bid ask size column is clicked at an empty price level and there's already an existing order on that side, it asks you what you want to do. So let's look at the first one and move your existing order. So if I have an order here, I'm trying to buy 10, 10 contracts, right? If I click here and the price is moving up, let's say I try to get in at 125 and oh, I see the price move up. And then I, I move up as well. You know, you don't want to chase, but let's say I do that. I buy right here. That's fine. It will move my existing order. If you have it set on create a new order, then it's going to keep your order here and execute a new order at 135. And what can happen in seconds is both of them will fill. So let's say the price drops and you're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm close to stopping out, right? Let's just say the worst happens because we always need to mitigate risk. What's going to happen is you're going to be, you're going to double your exposure. You'll have another order to go through. So this is critical. You need to set it up the way that you intend it. I set it to move my existing order. When it's clicked at a price level that already has an existing order, cancel the order. So meaning if we're here and I click again, that can either mean cancel or it can mean create a new order. Be very careful. Creating new orders increases your exposure. Only have that set up if you want it to be set up. A lot of people don't go over this. It's absolutely critical. I know of people who have watched different videos on YouTube and done some of their own research and they missed this. And the default configuration, I believe, actually has created a new order. This can be catastrophic because you're also, it's not only that you're doubling your exposure, it's you're thinking that you just did something completely different. So get this squared away. You want it to move your existing order. I, this is the way I set it up. And when I click, I want it to cancel. But you can configure it the way that you want to, so long as you know what you're doing. And remember, it's instantly sent because we're armed. And then you get a few more options like, do you want to recenter if the price is moving up? Do you want this to automatically recenter? You can configure the colors and all that sort of thing. That's entirely up to you, right? That doesn't speak to the fundamental of what we're doing. So hopefully this gives you a good idea. Just to recap, again, we have our news we're watching here. That's linked to the underlying, right? I'm not putting my options in here. I'm getting news on the actual security. I'm not looking for options news because they're not going to have news on the options strike that I'm looking at. Then I keep my options along with the contract prices, right? Right here. This is what I'm looking to trade on the day. That way, if I want to move from one to the other and have it populate here, ready for me to trade, it's ready to go. I monitor the general markets here, and then I have a better view of the security that I'm zooming in on. Again, if I'm looking at AMD, I click here, and we're now looking at AMD. So this is what I'm zoomed in on. I have this queued up, ready to go to trade in Book Trader. I'm watching the price action, and I'm ready to go. And of course, you can create more of these on additional displays if you have them, but I really wanted to make something where you could look at it and say, I can do that if you just have one monitor. And if you have others, you could say, hey, I could do that on my main monitor and I can get even more utility elsewhere. So don't forget the configuration, double, triple check your setup. And then of course, remember with interactive brokers, you save your settings. Always save your settings before exiting because you don't want to exit then come back and then say, ah, oh, what happened? And once you're done, I like to lock this just in case I click in the wrong place. Now it's locked. I can't move things around. See, when I click here, I try to move the windows. It doesn't let me. And that's about it. So hopefully you have a better understanding. I know it's taken a little bit, but I'm so happy to get this out to everybody who's interested in interactive brokers. Hopefully this helps you feel more comfortable with your trading. 
And if you're not trading with interactive brokers and you'd like to sign up just to give it a try, it's free. I'll leave my referral code in the description. Feel free to use it or not, whatever you guys prefer. And always try it out before you make a decision. If there's any other questions, please leave it in the comment section. Thanks so much and we'll talk to you guys soon.